the eight, 88 number of Psalms. And there we will find these words. Lord, God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before thee. Let my prayer Come before thee, incline thine ear unto my cry. For my soul is full of troubles, and my life draweth nigh unto the grave. I am counted with them that go down into the pit. I am as a man that hath no strength, free among the dead, like the slain that lie in the grave. Whom thou rememberest no more, and they are cut off from thy hand. Thou hast laid me in the lowest in darkness and in deeps. Thy wrath lies hard upon me and thou hast afflicted me with all thy ways. Thou hast put away my acquaintance far from me. Thou hast made me an abomination unto them. I am shut up and I cannot come forth. My eye mourneth by reason of affliction. Lord, I have called David upon thee. I have stretched out my hands unto thee. The 188th number of Psalms. The first through the ninth verse. Words spoken by an individual we have our own various opinions pertaining to who spoke those words But the word of God did not define this person to be that of a man nor of a woman. Did not define his race, color, creed, or national origin. But one thing it did define. And that is regardless of this personal person's personal state of being. Regardless of what that person had gone through or is going through, there was one thing steadfast about that person. And that was that person's faith. in its God. Set fast, unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord, knowing that its labor 
No matter how many times it had to look up toward heaven and fall down on its knee and open its mouth and cry out. Knowing that his labor is not in vain. In the Lord. No matter how many times you have to look up, fall down, open your mouth and cry out to God. Let it be known that your lay is not in vain in the Lord. So let us think on this thought. Confidence in God while in the midst of suffering. Confidence in God while in the midst of suffering. This 88 number of song is the most controversial song which is found in the entire catalog of the book of Psalms. This 88 number of Psalms is the most controversial song which is found in the entire catalog of the book of Psalms. Mainly because of the many indifferences which are found among the biblical scholars. For there are some biblical scholars who accredit the authorship of this 88 number of Psalms to that of Job. saying that Job wrote this song after he had received word that a whirlwind had passed by his oldest son's home and destroyed it. And all the lives of his sons and his daughters were taken that house. And some say that this 88 number of song was penned by Job after Job had received word that a band of thieves had passed through his branch and stolen, taken all of his beasts of the fields, all of his cattle, his camels, his goats, his horses, his chickens, and then killed all of his servants. Some say this 88 number of songs was written by Job. After Job's body had been stricken with all kinds of paralysis. Paralysis which had caused Job's flesh to deteriorate and rot on its bones. And it is said that while in the midst of Job's affliction, that Job penned this song by saying, Lord, why hidest thy face from me? For I am afflicted and are ready to die. And some biblical scholars accredit the authorship of this song to that of King Hezekiah. After the prophet of God, Isaiah, went by Hezekiah's house and prophesied on his life. Said, O king, my God sent me by your house to tell you to get your house in order because you are going to soon die and not live. And Hezekiah, he turned his face to the wall 
And he fell down on his knees. And some biblical scholars state that he cried out these words to God, saying, Lord of my salvation, I have cried unto you both day and night. Show wonders unto the dead, that I might arise and praise you. And the word of God tells us that after Hezekiah had prayed that prayer, that the word of God came back to the prophet Isaiah. Telling Isaiah, I want you to go back to King Hezekiah's house and tell King Hezekiah that I heard his prayer and I'm going to add 15 years of days unto his life. And some theologians accredit this 88 number of songs to that of King Uzziah. After King Uzziah's body had been stricken with leprosy, with white leprosy, and white leprosy was the most dangerous and the most deadliest of all forms of leprosy. For white leprosy formed beneath the skin, leaving no visible evidence of his presence. And the life expectancy of a white leopard was 20 years. And after King Uzziah had entered into the latter part of his 20th year of illness, it is saying that King Uzziah fell down on his knees and he uttered these words of prayer unto the Lord, saying, Lord, hear my prayer, for I am for I stretch my hand unto thee, for there's no other help I know. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. I stretch my hand unto thee, for there's no other help I know. But let me tell you something, Black Chapel. It really doesn't matter who penned this 88 number song. All three of those men were citizens of suffering. Let me say that again. It really doesn't matter who penned this 88 number of song. Because all three of those men were citizens of suffering. And suffering will teach you some things about your God that you cannot learn from no other source. Suffering will teach you some things from that your God that you cannot learn from no other source. And what suffering taught those three men were that if they were to be healed, if they were to be delivered, if they were to be made whole again, it had to be done by God. Could nobody do it but God. If they were to be healed, if they were to be delivered, if they were to be made whole again, could nobody do it but God. But God, but God, what those three men suffering taught them, it taught them that there are still some things in this world that money just can't buy. There's still some things in this world that position and authority just can't grant you. That there are still some things in this world that can't nobody do but God. Nobody but God. And I'm wondering this afternoon, Black Shepherd, do we have any witnesses out there in the parking lot? Who know me? I'm going to shout out that there are still some things in this world that money just can't buy. That position and authority just can't work. That can't nobody do but God, but God, but God. And I wonder this afternoon, Black Shepherd, do we have any citizens of suffering out there on the parking lot? Those who have been stricken by some form of whirlwind, stricken by some form of illness, stricken by some form of loss, some form of whirlwind, some form of illness, some form of loss, and your back was up against the wall. And all all your averages and all the statistics had counted you out. But when you started counting, you counted on your God. You counted on your God. You fell down on your knees and your God stood up on his feet. When you fell down on your knees, your God stood up on his feet and he spoke to your word when. He spoke to your illness. He spoke to your law. He spoke to your odds. He spoke to your averages. He spoke to your statistics. Peace be still, peace be still, peace be still, and a great calm overshadowed them all. There's still some things in this world that can't nobody do but God. Money just can't buy you. Position and authority just can't work that work for you. Nobody but God. All three of those men were citizens of suffering. Citizens of suffering. And watch out. This 88 number song teach us three very valuable truths. I say this 88 number of song teaches us three priceless truths. First, it teaches us that, that, that when, when you find yourself caught up in the midst of it, I 
just don't know what to do in that situation. The tongue it teaches us. It teaches us that when you find yourself caught up in that position, it teaches us, Black Shepherd, when you find yourself caught up against a rock in a hard place. He said, it so teaches us that the first thing we should do before we call our doctor, before we call our lawyer, before we call the police, we need to go straight from our troubles with our troubles to Jesus. It should be 911 Jesus when you find your back up against the wall, when you find yourself in the midst of your whirlwind, when you find yourself in the midst of your loss, before you call your doctor, before you call your lawyer, before you call your police, you should be 911 Jesus. Jesus should become your emergency number because when you wait and you hesitate, that gives the enemy all the necessary time that he needs to play tricks with your mind, to distort your reality. Oh, yes, he will. Yes, he will. You see, the enemy will take a molehill and make it look like a mountain. The enemy will take your little problem, take your little situation, and place it beneath a magnifying glass and make it appear to be so hopeless and so helpless. But when you go to God first, may not move your mountain, but he will give you the strength to climb. May not take away your stumbling block, but he will lead you all around. When you go to God first, God has a way of giving you some confidence. So when trouble arrives on your horizon, you need to go straight from your troubles with your troubles to Jesus. It should be 911 Jesus. Jesus should become your emergency number. I said Jesus should become your emergency number. This song also teaches us that where you're located in your situation is not the controlling factor in your situation, but the controlling factor in your situation is how you respond towards your situation. I say that again. This 88 number song teaches us that where you're located in your situation is not the controlling factor in your situation, but the controlling factor in your situation is how you respond to your situation and every response should be from the outgrowth and the fruit of your obedience to your God and then God become the controlling factor in your situation and when God become the controlling factor in your situation ain't no mountains high enough ain't no rivers wide enough ain't no valleys deep enough that can stop you from getting out from getting through from coming out that's what Job meant when Job stated Though he slay me, but yet will I trust in him. I'm going to lay here on my sick bed and wait upon the Lord. I'm going to wait until my change come. Because I know in a latter day, my God is going to show up. He's going to show up. He's going to show up. And whenever he shows up, he's going to move my mountain. He's going to open up my sea. He's going to fill in my valleys. Whenever he shows up. Where you're located in your situation is not the controlling factor in your situation. But the controlling factor in your situation is how you respond towards your situation. And thirdly, this 88 number of song teaches us, it teaches us that there should come a time in your faith. There should come a time in your faith walk. There should come a time in your faith life when your faith should become more to you than just some urban legend. It should be reality. It should become more to you than just some urban legend. Just something you read about. Just something you talk about. Just something you think about. Faith should become a reality. More than just an urban legend. Because as David said, when I call him, he will answer. Whenever I call him, our confidence and our expectation, our confidence and our expectation should be influenced by the word of God. We're not looking for something that God said will not come. We're not asking for something that God said we cannot have. All those things are representation to us by the word of God. And we should have confidence and expectation in their arrival. Whatever you call, he will answer. I wonder this afternoon, Black Shepherd, do we have any witnesses out there? Saying, 
peace be still. Peace be still. And a great call. A mighty call. Overshadow. The whirlwind. Yes, the illness. Yeah. The laws. Because we serve a God today. We serve a God right now. But when he speaks, creation takes place. Doesn't have to be not be. But when God speaks, when God says, let it be, it shall become. And I come back here this afternoon, Black Shepherd, to let you know that God is getting ready to speak a word. Getting ready to speak a word over all your whirlwinds, over all your illnesses, and over all your loss, over all your odds, over all your averages, and all over all your negative statistics. God is getting ready to speak a word, and that word shall be, let it be. No matter how long they wait. No matter how long they suffer. No matter how many times they fell down on their knees and cried out to God. They maintain their confidence. Knowing. That if they could be healed. If they could be delivered. If they could be made whole again. Could nobody do it but God. Nobody. I looked all over, both high and low. Couldn't find nobody. I wonder this afternoon, Black Shepherd, do I have any witnesses out here? Those who have looked all over, both high and low. And when you came to your final conclusion, you realized that you know that.
you this morning. And that statement spoke of you. By way of a personal experience of Kennedy for baptism. It is the will of God that all of his sheep be intact, in touch, connected with an immediate fold. Not just wondering. No matter how attached you are to the Lord. He said, how can you say you love me? A God in whom you've never seen. And you can't attach yourself to your brother. The one in whom you see daily. This is all about the assembly.